you know, there, there is a deal. There is a, 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 a written and unwritten contract that everyone um, understands. And I think part of that that um, hasn't been considered uh, by the government in all of this uh, is the, the non-monetary aspect of it, in that uh, there was an expectation that workers came, they worked for a particular employer, in this case uh, the public sector, for uh, an extended period of time. There was an expectation from the employer that there was loyalty, that they would be loyal to the company, they would, do, they would work in the best uh, interests of the uh, particular government department or agency, uh, crown agency, whatever. Um, and uh, in, in, re part, in return for their service uh, their, uh, and for uh, taking lower wages as they went, uh, there would be a defined retirement benefit that they could count on over the long term and budget for over the long term. Uh, and I just want to remind everybody about the institutional memory that we gain with long-term workers in any sector. Uh, and, and, and just to put a little bug in your ear, um, some of the people during this debate have talked about, well, you know, what if, what if people that are close to retirement just go, nothing more for me here, I might as well go. Uh, and they take their retirement now and off they go. Just imagine um, if the municipal workers that we have that are in that kind of 55 to 64 range, in other words, early retirement, they could go now. Uh, what if they went? <laughs> Imagine the institutional memory that's going to walk out the door. Uh, now, imagine if you take the number of workers in the city of Edmonton or the city of Calgary, uh, Bonneville, uh, uh, Lloydminster, um, uh, Medicine Hat, Lethbridge, um, uh, uh, Pinoca, Lacombe, uh, a lot of those places that have municipal workers that are in that age range and they go, I'm out of here. You know, why should I have loyalty to my employer here when they don't have loyalty to me? Uh, just think about how much of what we now take for granted in smooth running of municipalities would disappear overnight. Because those workers in that institutional memory will have walked out the door. It's just a little bug to put in your ear. And remember, we had a hiring freeze in the 90s, so there is no cohort that comes behind them. So that cohort that's in the sort of 45 to 55 or 40 to 55, they're not there. The next cohort is in their 30s. So you're going to have the 50, 55 year olds with all, that know how to do stuff, walk out the door, and who's left? The 30 somethings. Not that there isn't great potential there, and not that some of them don't know what they're doing, I'm sure they do. But overall, imagine the havoc in our towns, in our villages, and in our cities. Because who is it that remembers, don't buy that particular kind of rock because it doesn't lay down as well on the, as gravel uh, on the, when you're uh, salting or sanding the roads and the highways as this other stuff. Where's that actually written down? Probably isn't. It's probably in somebody's head. Uh, so, you know, you, th that deal that was struck, that loyalty, that long-term relationship, that recognition of service and the provision of service, that's what's being um, pulled apart here. Uh, the, the, the weave of that is being pulled apart in what's being contemplated by the government uh, in this particular um, bill. So uh, the amendment is asking there's a lot more to be considered here uh, than what we've seen actually considered. Uh, so it should go to a committee to think about other things. I think it's a very valid point that's been made by others that there is a consultation gap here. We, uh, the government seems to have talked to uh, the uh, board members of the plan and then they put it out to the public. Who did we miss? Anybody? Anybody? The workers, the beneficiaries of the plan. That's who didn't get talked to here. So if you're looking for another reason why a committee could do some work, they could talk to the actual beneficiaries of the plan. Because the government very clearly talked to the board members. I just heard uh, that uh, they talked to the public, put it out to the public, didn't actually talk to the beneficiaries of the plan. That, that might be a bit of a problem here. Um, there's also a, a real hustle up in the, in the timeline. And I noticed that in some of the uh, sections, there's an obvious, there's a, 
I mean, the government understands it in other places. There are sections in there that go, oh, we've got to have a moratorium on this stuff. Will we allow the plan to get into place? You're not allowed to do anything to it until 2020. So, you know, there's a, a six-year timeline to establish the plans and get them on board. And yet, what's the timeline we're working with here? 18 months. Whoa. <laughs> so w what's the hurry? Uh, if you understand that it takes uh, six years to get this plan moving, why do you expect us to do all the rest of this stuff on the front end in 18 months? So I think there's a gap with that. Um, I, uh, I'd also, um, we've also had a number of, uh, I'll put my stats up against your stats, and that will probably continue um, through the rest of this debate. Uh, I think the stats I'm looking at are better than your stats. I think they come from a wider uh, um, a number of places. Um, today we tabled uh, something, the um, leader of the official opposition tabled something from the Canadian Institute of uh, Actu Actuaries. You know, that, that I'm going to trust a bit more than uh, the government telling me uh, that they've consulted with some people. Um, because frankly, I don't find any government consultation now credible because uh, you've, you've uh, not done what you said before and I'm um, holding that against you.